After sunset, you can eat and drink, and you can have, accompany your wife. Meaning, you can, if you want to have sexual relations, or you can have, want to have some time indecent talk in a special, uh, in during sexual relations. You, if you want to be indecent to your wife, you can. But what happened? Generally, people thought this month Ramadan is forbidden month. F month itself is a forbidden month, and the whole forbidden for in the whole month they did not. Uh, they have seen from sex in the night of the fast also because they thought it is this is also forbidden but it in the daytime when you are fasting it is not allowed to be obscene talk with your wives but they thought no the whole month is forbidden so we will not even have relationships with our wives in the night of the fast so Allah made it lawful that in the night of the fast if you want to have relations you can have but you cannot in the daytime you cannot it's, it's an understanding in the night of the fast, it is lawful, and not in the daytime. So he says, "Ohilil lakum laylatis siyam." Layla means night of the fast. So in the night of the fast, in the month of Ramadan, it is lawful to have, to be indecent or have sexual relation with your wife. But in the daytime, you cannot be indecent to your wife when you are fasting. So this was made lawful basically because people were making is unlawful. This is lawful. In the night of, so people ask him why the night Allah is mentioned the night of in the other nights is allowed. Of course, in the other night was allowed. So they make it unlawful in the month of forbidden month because they thought this is, is a lawful thing. But in the month of Ramadan, they made it forbidden themselves. So Allah says no. In the night of fast, it is allowed, lawful. But in the daytime means it is not allowed. It is unlawful. It is forbidden to have to be indecent with your wife. But you can be. In the in general in normal days in normal months, but this became a special order that to have relation with your wife is lawful in the daytime also, but not during the month of Ramadan when you are fasting. So it becomes a law, uh, a binding on us as Muslims. We cannot have any sexual ventures or indecent with your wife by talks also in the daytime when you are fasting. In the night it is allowed. Okay, another point is in the same ayat وَلَا تُبَاشِونَ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ Then do not accompany them when you are devoted in the mosque. Another thing is at the kaf, we say a person who sits or who sits in the mosque for 10 nights in the month of Ramadan. It's a practice in the month of Ramadan last 10 nights. People, men, go, they, they go to the mosque and they sit in the etakaf or they uh, refrain, themselves in the mosque, uh, refrain in themselves in the mosque for a period of 10 nights, 10 days and 10 nights. That is known as etakaf. But it is practiced by generally men. So it says that you cannot accompany women when you are in that state. Meaning in that state, if you are in etakaf in the mosque, Permission in the night of the fast is, fast is allowed to have that kind of relationship. But once you, have, you are in the, in the etakaf, uh, you are in the mosque, you cannot have this relationship. Exception to the rule is made, made by the law, law of Allah himself. Once you are in the mosque and you are in that state of etakaf, you cannot have relation with your wife. Again, you understand what I'm saying? Otherwise it is allowed if you're not sitting in the mosque. If you're not in etakaf in the mosque, you can, it is allowed in the night of the fast. But Allah says, وَلَا تُبَاشِيُ نَوَانْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ And in the mosque, if you are at the kaf, do not accompany them when you are devoted in the mosque. Once you are in devotion in the mosque, you cannot have this kind of relation with your wife. Otherwise, if you are not in the devotion in the mosque, in the month of Ramadan, last 10 nights, no, every man does not sit in the tekaf, they do not visit and go, go in the tekaf, it's a part of law. So if people are in their houses, they are not in the mosque devoted or not in the state of etikaf, they can have relationship in the night of the fast with their wives. But once they are devoted in the mosque, last 10 nights, that is last 10 nights in the month of Ramadan, you are not allowed to have any kind of relationship. This was 2-3. Another mention is also in Surah Muzammil, that is 73 and Ayah 20. You can write down the cross reference 73, 20 Ayah. 
it says in the Rabbaka Yalamu and Nakatakumu Adana min Tulutai Laili, one is for Watulahu, Watulut, Watulutau, Watai Fatum min a Ladina Mark, Wallahu Yukadir Layla, one Nahar, Alima Lantan Tasuhu, Fataba Alekum Fatrauma Tayasara Tayasara Mel Quran. Surely your Lord knows that you stand to pray two thirds of the night or half of the night or one, th or one third of a night and from those who are encircled with you. Allah has power over night and day. He knows that you are unable to keep the count thereof. He has turned you in mercy. So you read the Quran that is easy for you. So now what other, if you know people, if you, what other act in the Muslim community is in the month of Ramadan, which is generally not practiced in general month, in general year, uh, general eight months, in, sorry, nine months, in the month of Ramadan when you're fasting, when you're fasting in the month of Ramadan, what other acts you perform in the month of Ramadan specially? Taravi. So this ayah that I read to you is referring to the Taravi prayers. That in the month of Ramadan, the Quran, Shahru Ramadan, Ladi Unzila Fil Quran. Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed. So this Quranic revelation is the ongoing continuous process that the Imam who stands in the mosque and he recites the whole Quran. The whole Quran is being recited in all mosques of the world. And people, it's obligatory that you have to go special prayers is mentioned that, that Allah says that you can, I will first read this ayat, you cannot, Allah says, your Lord knows surely that you stand two thirds of the night, half of the night and one third of the night and from those who are encircled with you, they also stand with you. And Allah has power over night and day. He knows that you are unable to keep the count thereof. The timings are not accurate. So he has turned to you in mercy. So you read the Quran that is easy for you in that night. So what happens? That the Quran is being read. The two third and the one third and a half is according to the night and day difference of timings. There are timings when the whole day is about normal is 12 hours and 12 nights. 12 hours and 12, 12 hours at night. Normal. But there are certain countries like for example now, nowadays is how much? Sunset is, is 7, 7, 15, 7, 30 something like that. So if you sunrise is 5.30, something like that. So the night is shortened down nowadays. Summer is, in summer nights are shortened and the days are become longer. So sometimes the days become longer and the nights become shorter. Sometimes nights become longer, days become shorter. So Allah says whatever the two third you are in that state or one third of the state of the night, if you are half of the night or whatever the situation may be, but you have to stand for prayer. You have to read the Quran with, in a group, in a, in a, in a jama'ah. That is Tarawi. Salatul Layl. They say Salatul Layl in Arab world. Salatul Layl means that you stand and people are standing with you and you recite the Quran as easy for you. So general practice that has been established in the sacred mosque and all the mosques of the world are recitations of the Quran in, in standing position and a group of company is standing and praying the Taravi and the whole Quran is being read out. So whole Quran is and you have to attend. That's a special duty obligation on the Muslim world in those days. That's a do in the month of Ramadan only, not on the other months. So this again is the consciousness awareness of normal prayers. If people are missing the normal prayers in normal days. So this they have to perform so that they can become a regular practicing of the prayer in normal days. Prayer is an obligatory five times a day. But people are not praying five times a day suppose. So in the month of Ramadan they become more conscious, take guard of Allah and, and start practicing the five times a day and the Tarawi prayer. And once they establish the Tarawi prayer they can build up and guard themselves to, 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 to establish the normal prayer in normal, normal days. This is again making yourself awareness of Allah's ayahs. 
more conscious of ayahs. So that in the normal days, I may be a practicing of salah. So Allah has obligated these prayers and you have to read, listen to the whole Quran. The purpose of reciting the whole Quran in the month of Taraweeh is not only that he's, go, he's, he's reciting and we are just standing and thinking and imagining what we have to do next day and passing out something. You have to believe me if you don't understand Arabic. You have to read the whole Sipara. Normally it's, it is read in 30, uh, 30 division, equal divisions. That is another division of the Quran, Sipara. So you have to ask the Maulana Sahab or you know that he's reading from one this ayah to this ayah. That's the Sipara being read. One, one Sipara is being read, equal division. So you read in translation before you attend the Taravi. So you may have certain understanding of the Arabic words. In the eight months you try to understand what is being read. So that the whole Tarawi, it you become more conscious of it. That is the purpose in the Arab world. If you are attending Tarawi, the Muslims are getting the whole Quran message translation. If you understand the whole Quran, that what is being read, you are reading yourself and you are understanding and you are standing in the prayer to understand the whole Tarawi is being read to you. So you understand what is what the Quran says. So you are reading yourself alone. You are doing tadabbur, you are trying to understand, but in the month of Ramadan, the whole Quran you have to finish by the Imam, so you stand there, you listen to the whole Quran, if you know how to read it, you should also start reading read. If you are a Hafiz of certain ayat, and if Imam is reading, so you should start, you can also read with him slowly in your, in your mind, in your heart. You have to, that's the, that's the practice. So this is another do in the month of Ramadan. So in the, in the forbidden month of Ramadan, there are four things. One is fasting. You can have sexual relations with the, with the wife in the nights but not in, when you are in the mosque devoted, but you can have relation in the, you cannot have sexual or even obscene talk with your wives in the daytime when you are fasting. And the, this one is that you have to attend the Taravi. These are the four points in the forbidden month, this you have to do and not to do. Now in Bakla 2 and Ayat 217, Yes, Aluna ka anish sharil haram ketalin fee. Pul ketalin fee hi kabir was soddun an sabila wa kufrum bi. Wal masil haram wa ikhraju ahli minu akbaru and the law. Wal fitna tu akbaru minal katal. Wala yazaluna yukatilunakum hatta yerudukum and dinikum. In the sotahu. Woman yer tadid minkum and dini. Fayamut wa hua kafir. فَأُولَٰئِكَ حَبِطَتْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ They question you about fighting in the sacred or the forbidden month. Say fighting in it is a big offense. And to oppose from the way of Allah and from the sacred mosque and to reject with it and to expel its people from it is a greater offense in the nearness of Allah. And the captivation, fascination is a greater offense than killing. And if they have the capability, they will not cease to fight you until you turn from your judgment. And amongst you, whosoever turns away from his judgment, then he dies and he's a rejecter. So they are those who works have failed in this world and in the last. And they are the companions of fire. They dwell in it. In this ayah, you know, I read, I read an ayah before, the first ayah, that it says that fighting is prohibited in the, it is prohibited in the four, four sacred or forbidden months. It was prohibited. Now, they, people are asking that they question you about fighting in the sacred month. The, here the Arabic is singular, one sacred month. Which sacred month? We have understood four sacred months. We have understood the four sacred months. So which sacred months is not mentioned? They are asking that fighting is prohibited in a sacred month. We have already understood, yes, sacred, four sacred months are all the four sacred months fighting is, is prohibited. We have come to know, we have read the, the previous Anaya. But still people are asking, they say, Allah says in answer to that, it's fighting is a big offense, big. It is a big to fight. First of all, it is, it is not allowed in the forbidden month. But if you fight, it is big crime, basically. 
It's a big thing if you're doing this. And further he says, and people, if you do that, then what are you doing? Then the people, he says, and to oppose from the way of Allah, from the sacred mosque. Again, the Masjid al-Haram, you see, Masjid al-Haram is being, is, is, is the, again, Masjid al-Haram is a forbidden mosque. Normally we say Masjid al-Haram is a sacred mosque. But basically, if you translate, it's a forbidden mosque. Why it is forbidden? Forbidden? It is forbidden to the, uh, from the mushriks. There is an ayat in the Quran, 9, Surah Tawbah 9, and ayah, I think it is 20 something, 23 something. Allah says the mushriks, the persons who associate from, uh, with Allah some other, uh, some, other this, uh, some other people who associate uh, with Allah, and if they go to, uh, they want to join and go to visit Makkah, so for Hajj or whatever reason, they are not allowed. It is, it is forbidden for the mushriks. So that mosque is a forbidden mosque for the mushriks, sacred mosque. So now there are people who are opposing the sacred mosque, meaning they are opposing the system of the sacred mosque. So they, Allah said that is, a, that is also a big, to oppose from the way of Allah, that people are opposing the way of Allah, that is, a, that is also crime. And from the sacred mosque is also up to oppose from the sacred mosque. So actually the sacred mosque is, is, is in, the, in Mecca and people, Allah says in the, another ayah, what the khidum in maqam Ibrahim and Musalla, that you take from the standing position, from the standing position of Ibrahim, the prayer established. If you oppose the salah, the prayer, if you oppose the salah prayer, that format which is being practiced in the sacred mosque, you are opposing the sacred mosque. If you oppose any act that is going, people are going around the Kaaba because Allah says tawaf. If you oppose the tawaf, you are against the sacred mosque. The, you are not against the building basically. What the Muslims community performing the act, the people who are opposing the system of the sacred mosque is basically opposing. This is not a physical boundary you are opposing. It is the act that Muslims are performing in the sacred mosque is the performance of the Salah because one of the asses what the khidu min maqam Ibrahim musalla because you take the from the standing posi- position the Salah the prayer perform if your format is separate different to the Imam of the Kaaba that he established the Salah the prayer and how he established the Salah and the prayer if you are in opposition to that if you are opposing the system that is prevailing in the sacred mouth you are opposing Allah and his commands and ayahs so Allah says, if you oppose the sacred mosque, you are in a wrong position. So the reference you can note down in Surah Tawbah 9 and Ayah 28, which says that, do not, I will read you, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, innam al-mushrikuna najsun, fala yakrabu, fala yakrabu al-masjid haram ba'da amihim. Hada. It says, oh you believe, oh you believe, surely the mushrik, the associates are najas meaning they are unclean. Fala yakrabu, do not make, let them come near, near the Masjid al-Haram, the sacred mosque, after this year. Anyway, we are not discussing the Masjid al-Haram. But I was just trying to tell you that people who are not allowed to go to Masjid al-Haram, Mecca as a forbidden city, they do not allow the non-Muslims. Like non-Muslims are who? The Jews and the Christians and the Hindus and the Buddhists. All these people who are not Muslims, they are not allowed to go to, to Mecca, the holy city, we say, the forbidden mosque, because it's a forbidden mosque for the mushriks. So a, a general practice on the ground is that the non-Muslims are not allowed to visit the Mecca and Marina. They have made it lawful, these two. But in the, they, it's a forbidden mosque. It is otherwise a mosque allowed for all the Muslim community, but it's forbidden to those who are mushrik or associates or associates. Now, and Allah says, and to expel its people from it is a greater offense. Now, to expel the people of the sacred mosque is a greater offense. Who are the Ahlul Ahl Masjid Haram? It says, Wa ikhraju ahlihi minhu akbaru in the law. Ahl al Masjid Masjid Haram, there are people of the sacred mosque. First is the Masjid Ram, you know in Mecca, everybody know Masjid Ram. ikhraju ahali, if you expel the people of the sacred mosque, is greater sin or greater crime in the nearness of Allah. 
to expel its people from the is a greater offense. From it is a greater offense. My question to people are who are the people of the sacred mosque? Believers. Believers. Okay, there are many people who are performing the salah, but there are certain people who are opposing them, opposing the system. People who are opposing the system, my question to you is very clearly, you must listen to me very clearly, because in the history they say they were, who are the people of the sacred mosque? They were expelled to Iraq. They say, people say, uh, El Al Bayt. El Al Bayt is this El Al Bashir Haram, who, if you go into history, you can read about those people. Who are those people? Imam Hassan? Hussain? Uh, so they, uh, they migrated from this sacred mosque. They were thrown ahli minhu. To expel from the sacred mosque, they went to Iraq. That's what the people say in history. Why they leave? They should not leave this place. If they were the Al Al-Bayt. Al Al-Bayt means Al Al house people of this house, Masjid Ram, the Kaaba, Bayt. If you expel these people who are the people of the sacred mosque, it's a greater crime in the nearness of Allah. So my question to you is the why these people went, if the pe they were the people of the house, they should have not left the house. The question here is why I'm asking, why I'm asking you this question, people are opposing the system of the sacred mosque all over the world. All the groups, even you people in living in Pakistan, they are opposing the system of the, uh, the Masjid They say they, we are the righteous people in India, in Bangladesh, in Iran, all over the world I'm talking about. People who do not follow the format of the Salah of the Imam of the Kaaba, who do not practice the format of Salah as they do, and they say they don't know, they are illiterates, they don't know, we are the righteous people, you are opposing the sacred mass of system. You are opposing. Where did you get all this? Remember this, I'm telling you very in, in distinct terms. The Ahl Masjid Haram, the people of the sacred and mosque are not living there. Not living there. They are those people who are not opposing the system. The opposing the system is the opposition of the system prevailed. And in the sacred mosque is the Kaaba. People are going tawaf, doing, performing tawaf. And the Qayyam, Rugu, Salah is being practiced. Umrah is being practiced. It's a continuous practice going on. If I stand up and say, this is, they are doing it wrong, this is the right way to do so, where did I get it? From where I got it? What proof I have got? So you must understand, if you oppose the system that is being prevailed, you are opposing Allah's system. Because Allah says, Inna wala baitim Surely this is the first house. Mankind, made for mankind. Lalladi bibakka is in Bakka. Mubarak is a blessing. Wahudalil alameen. It is a guidance for all worlds. Now, if it's a house is a guidance for all worlds and you say that there is no guidance, I am the guide. So you are wrong. You are making that system as wrong. You are saying it is a wrong and you say, you know. Allah says it's a guidance for all worlds, that place. So if I visit there and take guidance from there, so what guidance I take? Do, do I take the Kaaba and touch the Kaaba and feel the guidance? Or I see the walls of the sacred mosque and I feel take guidance? It, you have to go, you see how the Imam prays. And you start coming back and start implementing that type of prayer. You see, you, you visit there and come back and start opposing the system that this is wrong and this is wrong and that is wrong and I know and I know. So you are opposing basically. What I am pointing out that the people of the house, of the people of the sacred mosque, Allah says that to expel its people from is a greater offense. And people are continuously practicing the salah and objecting to the system as prevailed in sacred mosque. It's a place of a guidance for all words. And if you oppose that, you are wrong. You are completely, it's a, you're getting a greater offense. As mentioned here, wa ikhraju ahli. And you, if you expel its people, it means the sacred mosque, minhu, from it, akbaru in the Allah, it is more great, it's a, it's a more great in the nearness of Allah. Wal fitna tu akbaru min al qatl. And the fitna, that is captivation, is more great, is, is a greater offense than killing. Two acts, 
throwing, uh, expelling the people out from the sacred, sacred mosque is a greater crime, is big. And another is in, if you are in captivation or if a cap fitna itself is a captivation, is a greater crime in, in the nearness of Allah than qatl. People asking about qatl. Is killing allowed or for, is allowed? Allah mentioned in compared to qatl in normal days or in the sacred months, qatl is, is Allah says a big offense. But the bigger offense is if you are captivated. Captivation or a bigger offense is to throw the people out from the sacred mosque. Meaning you oppose the sacred mosque. You throw its people out from the sacred mosque. If suppose I believe and practice the, the system of the sacred mosque and if you don't let me go to perform Hajj and Umrah, you are throwing me out from the sacred mosque. You are opposing me. Why are you not letting me to go to, to perform the Hajj and Umrah if you oppose me? So that is throwing its people out and this is a greater crime and fitna captivation. Now what is a captivation is a word by itself what does it mean? Quran explain to whom you are captivated. In Quran Surah I give you the reference side reference you write down Surah Taghabun 64 Surah and Ayah 15. I am just telling you that there are many other places where fitna word has occurred. And in Urdu language fitna means something like shar in, in, in Urdu language. Shar you understand? Some mischief. Fitna in Arabic means captivation. Fitna is not a negative word in Arabic language. Fitna means captivation, dil frevi, dil frepta. But in Urdu language, fitna in Urdu means shar, means something to do something wrong. Look, it in the Arabic says, look, in innama surah surah taghabun and ayah 15, I'm reading, innama amwalu amwalakum. Wa awladakum fitna. Wallahu indahu ajrun azim. Surely your wealth and your children are fitna, captivation to you. Surely Allah with other, Allah is a great, uh, uh, is a great uh, ajar reward. Now the question is Allah has given us the children. Who gave you, who gave the children? Children, Allah is giving us children. Who, who gives you the wealth? Allah. So Allah is giving you the wealth and Allah is giving the children and He says it's a captivation to you. Is it a shirt to you? It is captivation. You have got dil frayb, your, your, your love towards those wealth and your love towards your children is captivation. You are captivated. This is Allah says it's a captivation to you. And once you are captive to your children or to your wealth or to the wealth, it's, it's your test. So if I am captivated, when I am captivated in wealth and when I am captivated in, in children, believe me, you cannot follow the path of Allah. And once you cannot follow the path of Allah, it's like a kill, it's more, more you're living, it's a greater crime. Why? Because if you kill somebody, it's finished. But the whole life I lead and I am captivated by my children and I am captivated by wealth. So my whole life will be, cannot follow the ayahs of commandments of the do's and the don'ts because I am captivated. So that is why Allah says captivated is a greater crime. So Allah has given you wealth. Allah has given you children and he's made your, 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 you are captivated. So Allah says that you must strive with Allah and his message, messenger, following the do's and the don'ts, so you should control your feelings towards wealth, feelings towards your children.